Hey everybody, Greg Ray here with Outdoor Solutions Long Range Schools. We are very happy to announce our new partnership with the guys at Tacticam, and you'll be seeing us each month. We will be bringing you monthly tips from the range, things like bore sighting your rifle, MOA versus mill, and first focal plane versus second focal plane, and plenty others you'll hear from our director of training, Steve Arian, from one of our lead instructors, Eric Lund, and maybe even a few from myself. If there's something specific that you all would like to see, leave us a comment down below and we'll see if we can get it up for you. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Steve Arian here with Outdoor Solutions, and today we're gonna to talk to you about second focal plane versus first focal plane and the differences between those and specifically the pros and cons of both system and, and how to determine what system you have or what optical system you have, and also how to get the most out of it and know its weaknesses. So let's jump into it. We've got two optics here today. One's our student optic that we have on most of our student guns, and this is the Zeiss V4. We've been using them for years, solid little optic. It's a second focal plane optic. This is a six to 24, and they've, they've done really well. They're, they're, they're an awesome scope. We've, they see more use in a single year in our class than most scopes will see in a lifetime. You know, students cranking them up and down, thrown in and out of UTVs and stuff, and they've been a great optic. And then the other optic we have is the new LRP S5 from Zeiss. This one specifically is a three to 18 model. This is Zeiss's first entry into the first focal plane world. Um, I'm a huge fan of first focal plane optics. It's my personal preference when it comes to long range scopes and even hunting scopes. And it's really exciting to see a company like Zeiss with the quality of lenses that they have entering in this game. So this is their first offering and uh, we're gonna kind of compare these two and talk about what the differences are and what you should look forward to or look, look for if you're gonna purchase a new rifle scope. So we're going to show you some in-camera footage through the Zeiss uh, using our Tacticam system and utilizing that, you'll be able to see some of the advantages and disadvantages of using this system. So let's go ahead and jump down on the gun and let you see what I'm seeing when I use the Zeiss LRP S5. All right, so looking through the Zeiss, you can see the reticle here, and I'm gonna zoom it out and kind of give you some ideas of what it looks like when it's zoomed all the way out. Now, when we zoom out to three power, you can see that the reticle, you're not gonna really be able to read any of those subtension values, but the application of having to read the subtension values while at three power are extremely limited, if non-existent. I don't really need to worry about my hold at, you know, 10 minutes when I'm on three power. I would zoom in if I, if I needed to hold uh, that amount of elevation for whatever reason. So this is designed for your kind of your walk around quick shot. That's why the posts are so big. It allows your eyes to transition to the center of the reticle quickly. Now, as we zoom in and we're at about 200 yards, you can see the reticle starts to grow uh, proportionately with the target and as we zoom in we start to see all the numbers and the dots and the hash marks and etc and now we're able to actually see more of the detail that we needed in that reticle and I'm going to focus it just a little bit here now with this first focal plane you could dial to make this shot or you could hold to make this shot and again your power is irrelevant to your holds. You can be on whatever power you want and you can hold whatever your uh, dope chart is telling you to hold. So if it tells me to hold two minutes at 200 yards, then I'll hold up two minutes. If someone says, hey, you pushed left two minutes, well then that's simply right there for me. So it's easy to make corrections quickly with the first focal plane optic. And if you decide, hey, this is too much magnification, I want to be able to find my target, I'm having a hard time, you can zoom out to what you need and say, okay, oh, I can easily find my target now. Two minutes, two minutes, I'm right there, send it. So that's one of the advantages of a first focal plane system. Okay, so here we have a target at four. And again, I can zoom out if I needed to find that target quickly. And then I could zoom in as much as I wanted to and say, oh, that's sufficient. I've got good magnification, good light gathering right there. I don't really care what power I'm on. And if someone said, hey, I need you to hold you know, six minutes, I can hold six minutes. If they said push left a couple of minutes, I could push left. If they said push right, I could push right and hold there. So that's one of the advantages to the first focal plane system, again, is being able to hold on whatever power you want to hold on. 
Again, and one of the disadvantages is when you zoom all the way out, you start to lose all that stuff. But again, why am I zooming out at 400 yards to three power? Uh, what is my application of doing that? So I'd probably zoom in and get a little bit of vanification, take advantage of that to be able to see what I wanted to see in that scenario. So primarily your first focal plane optics, the biggest advantage to them are your ability to quickly engage a target or re-engage a target regardless of your power setting and to have the field of view that you want and the magnification you want rather than needing to be on maximum power to, uh, to have the correct holds or the ability to, um, or the opportunity to make a mistake sometimes with the second focal plane because for forgetting what power you're on and oh I didn't realize my holds were doubled because I was on my half power I forgot and now you've missed a uh, missed an animal so it's important to uh, pay attention to those things but that's one of the biggest benefits of the first focal plane systems it takes some of that guesswork or some not some of the guesswork but some of those potential errors out of the equation so now let's get into the uh, second focal plane optic all right, so now that we've had a good look at the first focal plane optic, let's look through a second focal plane and directly compare the two at the same distances. And I'll try to keep this one about the same magnification level. Uh, we'll go here to the 200 yard target. And right now I'm on six power and you can see the reticle uh, it's in its relation to the target as far as its size goes. And then as I zoom in here, you can tell the reticle is not growing. We're not losing anymore. It's not doing anything. It's just staying the same size and we'll zoom all the way up to right about there and it's about 18 power right in there and then i'm going to just focus a little bit for myself and my parallax and there we go so that is our field of view there on our 18 power on the 6 to 24 size so if i wanted to go up to the uh, what would be our hold power in other words what power level that this reticle is true at, I would need to go to here, which is 24. And you can see that now I'm starting to lose some of my field of view. So if I was on a game animal or something and I wanted to be able to work on my holds or utilize my holds, then this is the power level I would have to be on to do that. And you know, if you were telling me, hey, look over here, do you see the tree or do you see this? I may have to zoom out so I can see what you're talking about and then find it and zoom back in so again, I have my holds. So um, that's the difference in the two. However, the advantage to the second focal plane is that now I have um, the exact same reticle I'm always used to as far as the size goes and the reticle is nice and clear and it's something I'm familiar with. So uh, that, that is the advantage. I haven't lost any or gained anything and as far as the reticle size goes, it's the exact same subtensions um, that I'm always used to seeing. So I'm kind of familiar with it. And also, you know, this target at 200 yards, we're not going to be utilizing many holds on this, maybe a little wind here or there, but you're really not going to be uh, having to hold much regardless anyway. So uh, so let's go over here to the next one, which will be, we'll just go to our 400. And again, we're on our maximum power here. And you can kind of see what this is like here. And then now if I go back down to um, our 18 to compare it to directly to the 3 to 18 LRP, that's 5. And that's what we're looking at as far as the field of view, so on and so forth. Again, you know, if we dial back down, this only goes to about six, so that's as low as it gets right there in our power range. So if we wanted to have a larger field of view, if we we're looking for something, maybe, you know, for me at this distance, if I was actually scouting something out, I may be in this power range right here, just kind of looking around, gives me a good field of view, good contrast and clarity. I'm just kind of looking around you know, I can, I can scan quickly at different distances. And this is a pretty good one. However, I have to realize, oh, I'm on, you know, seven, uh, 12 power right here. So my subtensions are actually doubled. So instead of these being, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, that's going to be 10, 20, 30, and 40 in uh, MOA as far as our adjustments, as far as our drop goes. So that's the important thing to remember is that because it is second focal plane, whatever power range I'm on is, is absolutely crucial if I'm planning on doing any types of hold, whether it be elevation, windage, or moving targets, uh, so on and so forth. Now, I'm, we're not definitely not advocating in shooting at moving game animals or anything like that, but if you're out hog hunting or something like that, maybe you have a hog moving at distance and you have a specific hold that you typically use, you know, your power level is going to make that hold true or not. You know, one time you may have been shooting on six power and you got a hit with a running hog and then the next time you go out, 
now you're on seven or eight or 10 power or whatever, and now that subtension is completely changed. So that hold that you used before to work may not work that time. So a first focal plane, that's one advantage to it. However, when you're on that three power, on that low power on that one, you're not gonna be able to see your subtensions anyways. You know, you're gonna have to be zoomed in a little bit to see those. So give and take a little bit with each system, but understanding it is the biggest point that we wanna make sure we get across to our students and to our viewers out there is that understanding which system you have and the pros and cons of each one is gonna allow you to utilize that best to make sure that your hunts or whatever you're doing is a success. So hope you enjoyed this little tidbit about the second focal plane versus first focal plane. Uh, unfortunately, there's no winner in this. There's just two really good systems that you get to choose from. And that's what we wanted to bring to you guys today is find the system that works for you uh, based on whatever hunt or whatever uh, competitive event or shooting style that you like to do. And, you know, make sure that you're confident and understand the system's strengths, weaknesses, and the advantages to different things. So hope you guys enjoyed this tidbit from uh, us here at Outdoor Solutions. Be sure to check us out for more videos, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and we'll be giving you more stuff soon. So stay tuned.